right, so let's go ahead and start a new document today. We're going to be reviewing the three worksheets that we were given this week to complete. So I'm going to be reviewing the techniques that are required in order to complete those. Um, the first one is that basic scene composition. So I'm going to name it scene. And just FYI for your information, we are having a quiz pretty soon probably around next week um, and then we will be having a test as well on Illustrator and I can tell you I can guarantee you that orientation will be on the quiz and on the test okay there are two types of page orientation what are those two portrait and landscape that's gonna be a question on the test um, right now I'm just gonna use landscape uh, no I'll use portrait because that's what this first scenery uh, packet told you to use so I'm going to use portrait click OK now the first thing you should do the very first thing you should do whenever you create a new document is to save it why should you save it first before you even do anything okay because it's good to save often the key command to save is just control s but when you save for the first time you need to go to save as and you need to change the location of your document um, one of the thing one of the things that the morning class tells me is that hey um, people from the afternoon class are saving their work in my folder okay because you guys are using the same version of illustrator on the same computers with the same login if you just click save you're saving in the same location as the previous person you need to make absolutely sure that you're saving in your folder and to do that all you need to do is click on the desktop symbol right here and choose the folder with your name on it so if you're not doing that when you create a new document more than likely you're saving it into the AM folder so here's my folder Mr. Pipkin now I'm gonna save it in there so now when you are working anytime you do something new anytime you do something different um, just hit control s after you do save as after you choose a location just hit OK or hit enter when that pop-up comes up all right so we got our document and on the scene I think the number one thing that uh, people have trouble with the most was the the star in the background remember that that star you guys made in the background it had like a um, I think most people put like this orange gradient in it like that but the packet it asks you to do an extra step okay so you're not just making the star what was that extra step that it wanted you to do adjust the anchor points right so these rays from the star can be adjusted by using the direct selection tool and that's the white arrow and this works for any anchor point so it asks you to adjust these rays and to go around here and do that Okay. I think the other thing people get caught up on were those clouds. You guys remember those? Those clouds, all they are are ellipses, right? They're just little circles. And in fact, what I do is I just make one, hold down Alt, drag out a few more, overlap them a little bit like that. And now you can use your Pathfinder tool to merge those together. And I think that's what it asked you to do in the packet so I'm gonna add to shape area and then hit expand and now you got yourself a little cloud so now that I made one cloud get, get into the habit of not repeating 
um, uh, processes a lot because if you have a shape a basic shape like this it should be nothing then to make another cloud that's similar to it but not exactly the same so if I hold down alt and I drag this one out how about on this one I can rotate it around so that it's like that okay uh, hold down alt drag another one out maybe make this one a little bit smaller kind of overlap them a little bit so you're giving yourself some variety without recreating the wheel each time another thing you can do is because you have this shape you can hold down alt you can merge two clouds together now so you can do that now use your pathfinder merge those two together hit expand now you have a a larger cloud okay so you can give yourself some diversity without having to recreate the wheel each time and this will save you a lot of time and a lot of work in illustrator okay don't try to recreate it each thing each time all right so we got that the other thing that caught students up were those hills you remember those um, with the hills you should start off with uh, the green oval that looked like that now what I would do if I were making them I'd hold down alt drag out a copy and then make that black one because it wanted like to have that black shadow around it go to a range bring the green one to the front and I think it said made make the green one just a little bit larger so that the stroke looks like that a little bit select them both now control G will group those together and now you can hold down alt and drag out copies of those hills but check it out if you just make copies of them and put three of them on top of each other they tend to look like little footballs instead why not use your arrange and bring one to the front that'll give it more of a, a natural looking type feel now that you got those three group those three together now you got a group so in case you want to duplicate it, you can go to Alt, Arrange, Send to the back. Now you got two sets of hills. So now you got, you know, just a little bit different of a feel. Okay, so let's chop the heels off on the side. To do that, we're going to use the uh, Pathfinder. Um, and let's use a rectangle. And what I like to do is to change the color of the object that I'm using the Pathfinder for. Because it goes away anyway. And if you use a, a completely opposite color like red or orange, you can kind of see where it meets up with the green on the side here. If I were to use a, a green rectangle, it's going to be very difficult to see. So go ahead and choose the opposite color. You got those selected. So now select them again. And now use the divide on your pathfinder. When you use the divide on the pathfinder, it puts in anchor points where those objects overlapped. But you can use your white arrow tool to delete the parts that you don't want. So click delete out there. Delete all this extra stuff that you don't want okay and I'm just gonna swipe over here just to be sure up oh, see I found a little anchor point out there so I'm gonna swipe over here just to be sure delete that one too and you're to do that on all three sides do it over here on the right and on the bottom now the last part was that frame and the frame was all you gotta do for the frame Let's put a black rectangle down at the bottom like that and now check it out to put the frame on the side I'm just going to use a rectangle with no fill with just a, a, a stroke Sw switch it up go to window stroke increase my stroke weight a little bit and it makes the frame and boom bam there I am okay last part let's type our name 
You never want to write your name on work from this class. So I'm going to type my name. But the problem is, is that it types it in black. Black text on a black frame, you can't see it, so I'm going to change it to white. But if you take a look up at the screen, what's the problem? Why can't I see anything? Because I got a black stroke on it. I got a white fill, okay? But I can't see it because it has a black stroke. So take the black stroke off. There you go. All right? Okay, so there's packet number one. I think those are the things that caught most people up. Uh, the spiral, I think you guys are cool on that one. Um, the next one were the shapes using the Pathfinder. So I'm going to make a new document, call it Pathfinder. I'm going to use a landscape orientation for that one. Now, the Pathfinder, I like it because it forces you to think. It's not just like click on a button, here you go, you're done. It forces you to think. So what you have to do is you have to think about what two shapes you can merge together in order to get this, the shapes in the packet. So I'm going to do the first one. 